In this video, I'm gonna be talking all about the must-have food photography props for your collection. What's up YouTube and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name's Amy and on this channel I discuss everything to do with food photography and how to improve your photography. If that interests you then click subscribe down below because there's always more videos coming every week. This video I'm going to be talking about the best food photography props to start your prop collection. So if you've been scrolling down Instagram and you've seen the absolutely gorgeous food photography you'll notice they've always got really nice fancy plates fancy cut and you're probably looking like oh my gosh how expensive is this going to be to be a food photographer and yes buying props it does add up it does get very expensive so I'm going to talk through the best props to start with when you're just starting out just so you can keep that cost down a little bit and still get some really amazing food photography images so I've got eight props here and this is just a base. You definitely don't need to go out and buy all eight of these straight away. I'm gonna go through each one and you'll probably realize which ones would coincide with your style of photography most. I'll also try to whip up a few of these props in action as well. So if a picture pops up, that's what that is. If you stay till the end, I also have a ninth bonus prop as well. Before I go ahead and start talking about all of these props I've got laid out here, which you cannot see, when I buy props, I always try to buy them in sets of three. The reason I prefer to buy them in sets of three is because we tend to work with the rule of odd. It's not really a rule, but it's called rule of odd and things in odd numbers tend to look more pleasing for the eye. So everything you see here, I've probably got three to five of them. I tend to either get three or five. My first prop is small side plates. As you see here, this is technically a side plate, but it's a pretty massive side plate. But I also have like normal sized side plates here. When working with food, you want the food to take up a lot of the plate. You don't want much empty space. That's why smaller plates definitely work best for food photography. And it makes them a little bit cheaper as well because you don't need to buy as much food to put on the plate and they tend to be cheaper than the big plates. These are from Sainsbury's, which is, if you're not from the UK, it's like a kind of just like a chain supermarket shop, but it has a really nice home section. So you can find these sorts of props absolutely anywhere. I really like these ones because they've got like the speckled effect. Try to stick with neutral colors, especially when you're starting out and you don't have a very specific style you want to stick to. The neutral colored props are gonna go in absolutely all sets and it makes your props a lot more versatile as well. So the more different types of foods and subjects you can shoot on a plate, the more often you're gonna use it. This one has a nice kind of texture, if you can see here, which just adds so much to a picture. This one's a really nice small size, so if you add a little bit of cake on here, the plate isn't gonna completely take over the whole shot. Kind of like prop number one, but 1.5. Smaller bowls as well, so again, we're just popping our food on these, but try to get them a bit smaller. I love these ones, they've got a lovely kind of speckled effect on the inside again, so it's adding that interest, it's not, too in your face but it's also not completely plain and it also has kind of like a oddly shaped rim which looks really good in pictures. Prop number two is very similar to prop number one but slightly bigger. So these are going to be our bowls and plates for serving so to kind of look like you're serving some food. So this is the normal dinner plate to match the smaller side plate I've got here and I've just got a couple of these ones because even though this is a normal dinner plate I mean, I'm quite small, this looks absolutely massive if you ask me. But even though this is just a normal dinner plate, if it's next to the side plate, and the side plate has my main dish on, this works really well as a serving dish, or a platter, that sort of thing. So it's kind of just shrinking down to what we'd normally use in, in real life. And as you can see, these are all a matte texture, and that's probably the most important thing I look for when I'm looking for props because I don't want bright specks or distracting glares or reflections coming off my plates. Then kind of just I have here kind of like what we normally use as a pasta dish but filled completely with food. It's going to look like a really good side dish next to some smaller bowls. I actually have the smaller bowls matching this as well. And again, this is from Sainsbury's. Sorry, I forgot to mention. This one is from Wilkinson's. I don't know if that's just a British shop, I'm not quite sure. What I'll do is if I can find the same or something similar online, I'm gonna just link it in the description below. I think this is a separate company, yeah, I bought it at Sainsbury's, so you can probably find this, it's a Habitat one. 
prop number three is glasses. So there's two kinds of glassware that I tend to use when I'm shooting and we've got this really textured, quite busy glass here. It's really nice for a whiskey shot or I use it for some orange juice shot. This kind of thing is really good if you don't need to see into the drink, yet the drink is the subject you're photographing. If you're just having the drink on the side, this can get quite distracting. It, it's got a nice texture, but it's obviously, it's gonna take up a, quite a lot of the attention in a picture. I also have these very kind of delicate, thin glasses. These are really nice because they've got no distractions on them. So if you want to either see into what's in them, these work really good. They're very flat and they don't cause strange reflections. And if you're shooting a meal and want like a glass of water or some juice on the side, that's gonna sit at the edge of your shot and it's not gonna be really distracting. I'm not even sure where these came from. I think these came from Tesco, which if you're in the UK, We'll definitely know what I'm on about. If you're not, you've probably got no idea. I tend to get a lot of my props just from my just general shop. My fourth prop and probably one of my favourite to use is matte cutlery. So again with the matte effect, this is going to stop your cutlery having like big shiny reflections, distracting really bright highlights in a shot. I have this black set, so these are completely matte and it's, there's a big light here. It's my cutlery cupboard. So compared to a normal spoon, you can see if I'm taking a picture as well, I don't want to be able to see myself. I'm going to be able to see myself in this spoon. In that one, you're not. It's always nice to have yourself a really good set of matte or even just like a rustic set of cutlery. So my kind of style is a bit more modern. So I've gone for these plain black matte cutlery, but a lot of people have luck finding like more antique cutlery in like secondhand shops and charity shops, that sort of thing. Older cutlery also has that nice matte effect because it's definitely one I'd recommend. Our fifth prop is probably, I've said this before, but one of my favorite to add in and they're super cheap to just add in a couple to your collection will really straight away improve your food photography and that is linens. These can be linen tea towels or napkins. I've got a few smaller ones like this. This is a really nice one to just have under one of them small little plates because it's not too big and doesn't take over the whole plate. And then I have a sort of the bigger one, which kind of is nice to kind of have peeking in the side of the frame. So adding a few of these linens to your prop collection will definitely elevate your photography. Having one of these in a shot is gonna add a really nice soft texture. Adds a really nice bit of interest to all your images. So these ones are real linen and these are my favorite. They're just a bit small, but they're, they tend to do what they're told. Or if you can't get real linen, this one is cotton and again, this cotton one just really does what it's told as well. If you're looking to go out there and get linens, I would probably recommend trying to get one darker one and one lighter one. So you've got at least something for a darker set and something for a light and airy set. Try to get them in the neutral colours. So just a dark grey and a white or off-white one is going to go into so many more different sets than a bright red. I've got a few red napkins. I think I've maybe used it in one, maybe two shoots. Ah, sick prop is something I'm always on the search for more of them and that is little pinch or dip bowls. So again we're kind of going with the more neutral colours. I've got them in a few different sizes so things like these ones are really nice to have some salt or some pepper or a few little seeds in and then I've got the slightly bigger ones which are good for maybe a few greens in the back of a scene, sauce, dips, these are always going to be useful and you can never have too many dip bowls. I'm constantly, constantly buying them, which is why, like I said, collecting props can really get quite expensive, but these are always brilliant. They're really nice to just add that extra little bit of interest, that extra element into a scene to just kind of frame your subject. So our seventh prop would be wood, Woo! wood. Bars. I try not to get them in a really like yellowy tone because it just doesn't look very good with food. I had a more yellowy toned one and I actually painted it white. Didn't work out very well but it, it does the job when needed. These are really nice. I didn't need a height into a straight on shoot so something can be at the back sat on top of one of these. If you're taking it from above like a flat lay it would be really good to kind of have a bowl underneath it just to kind of add that extra layer, that extra bit of interest. These are really good. Adding that extra kind of 
oomph or texture or layer to it in an image, something like this goes a long way and can be added into a lot of different photo shoots. Although these boards are really great to have, they're definitely a luxury when it comes to food photography. I would suggest getting all of the other props mentioned today before you look at investing in something like a chopping board or a wood board. They're not the cheapest prop, they're probably the most expensive thing that I've mentioned and they're not going to be used in every shot. All the other things are going to be used a lot more than one of these. But when it comes time to maybe you've saved a bit of money or you really want to elevate to that next level, wood board like this will definitely do that for you. So the eighth prop is little glass bottles or jars like this. And these were quite cheap. So this one is from Sainsbury's. I'm not sponsored by Sainsbury's. This is just where I tend to get a lot of my props from. But if you're listening to Sainsbury's, definitely hit me up. And you go. These add a lot of interest to props and you can add depth by just being in the background and making it look like there's a little bit more going on in the shot. These were, I think this one was about a pound, this one was maybe about one pound fifty. They're definitely not going to break the bank and you only need one of them. It's a really good thing to just have ready for a shoot when needed. If you're still with me, let me know in the comments below which is your favourite prop so far. So between one and eight, which is your favourite? And because you stayed, you're gonna get my ninth bonus prop. And this isn't necessarily a prop like a plate, but it's definitely one used in every single shot I've taken. And you can use this prop without having any of the others. And that is ingredients. I spoke a lot about using ingredients in shot in this video, but it definitely needs to be mentioned when we're talking about props. One, it's pretty cheap. Two, Every photo you take should probably have a flavour cue or an ingredient just hiding away there, just to add that little bit more story to your image. I keep things on hand like chilli flakes, cocoa powder, salt, and I've got cinnamon sticks, things like that that are gonna keep for a very long time, are really good to have in a cupboard ready to use whenever you need it. So things like flour, just to kind of lay it out on a baking scene. They're so good at adding story, interest and texture to your images, which is so important. You don't even need to have your food on a plate, but if you've got some props around it, framing the subject nicely, it's going to look absolutely brilliant. You can also use ingredients that you've used in the cooking of a recipe, like garlic. Garlic's got a lovely colour and a lovely texture, and it can really add some interest if it's just there in the corner. Even though you can't see there's garlic in the food, that'll give a, the viewer a cue that there's garlic in the recipe. So it works really well when you've got not many props about. That is all for this video, guys. If you're looking at creating a prop collection, I definitely would start with these. Let me know in the comments below if there's any that you hadn't really thought of. Thank you for watching, guys. I really appreciate it so much every time someone watches one of my videos. I hope you found this useful and I'll see you next week for another video and we've got another DIY background next week and we're going to go for a more Valentine's Day theme to get us ready for Valentine's Day.